Tony Perkins is a Missouri Tiger, and if you believe his former coach, he had about a half a million reasons to commit to Missouri. So let's talk about that and more right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso, and a man who does occasionally take economic advice from UFC fighters. Hope you enjoyed UFC 300 as much as I did. But you know what? Before we get to today's show, you know, these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps Find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. And when it came to terms and conditions for getting Tony Perkins, the former Iowa point guard, well, apparently those terms were all about the Benjamins, to be quite honest with you. This seems like a money move for Tony Perkins. Now, don't get me wrong. That's not a criticism. That just shows where we are in terms of college basketball. You look at it, hey, Perkins visited Missouri after being a four-year player at Iowa. Seems like an incredibly well-liked young man, a charismatic young guy. No problems with Iowa or anything like that. So why is he leaving the Hawkeyes? There's a lot of those questions these days. Well, if you listen to... Fran McCaffrey, their coach up in Iowa, he basically told the bigwigs up in Iowa City that, hey, this kid is going to cost about a half a million bucks. That's probably his NIL value, and we quite simply just can't afford that. Well, one team that could apparently, the Missouri Tigers. Another, perhaps the Oregon Ducks. That was another spot that Perkins visited. And again, after playing four years at Iowa, he's got a unique opportunity here. Obviously, his freshman season, that COVID year did not count for him. So we're now to basically the end of this whole, well, did did that year count for this guy, that whole type of deal? This is basically the final cycle of that that we're going through. That's one thing to note, by the way. But again, second team all Big Ten last season for the six foot four Perkins. Started three of his four years at Iowa and on some really good teams as well with Luca Garza and Keegan Murray, who's an NBA player. So he's definitely used to the spotlight after playing high school ball in Indianapolis too, which is which is quite the the high school mecca of hoops as well. And they won the 2022 Big Ten Championship, the tournament. Perkins was a huge reason why, again, It's just hard to blame him, in my opinion, for taking this moment to cash in. A half a million bucks? That's a life-changing amount of money for just about anybody, especially a young man like Tony Perkins. I could certainly use a half a million bucks. I don't know about you. That would make me rethink some of my decisions in life going forward as well. And what will... But in terms of what kind of player is Missouri getting here? Well, first of all, if you look at the transfer portal rankings, say you just compare ESPN's rankings to the athletics and basketball, boy, there's a lot of variation just between those two rankings. So Perkins, 49th at the athletic, 21st overall in the country at ESPN. I tend to take the ESPN rankings a little bit more seriously, but again, just as just as an example here, their number one player, Omar Bello, Balo, seven footer for Arizona. Excuse me for not knowing how to pronounce his name correctly, but the point here, there's a guy that Missouri was rumored to be interested in. ESPN has him as the number one player in the portal currently. The Athletic has him 26. That's quite a range there for a guy who's considered the best player in the in the portal class by ESPN. But What does Missouri have in Perkins here? Well, he's not a great shooter or a great scorer on paper. That's for darn sure. But he does get to the line at a really high rate for a point guard, and he makes about 80% of his free throws. 
His assist rate jumped up in a huge way last season, his senior year for Iowa, but the turnover rate stayed basically the same. That's a really good sign for the type of leader and ball handler he is, the type of guy who can obviously get you into your offense. Also, better size at the position will Missouri have this year with Perkins versus Sean East and certainly Nick Honor as well. That'll be nice defensively. Perhaps Gates and company think they can mold Perkins' shot a little more, but this is definitely not a, hey, this is not an offense first, figure out the rest kind of player whatsoever. He's not not a flashy addition, I don't think. Sure, second team, all Big Ten. I'm just saying the player himself is not particularly flashy, but Hopefully, this is going to be a really good addition. I think he fits some needs for Missouri, a lead ball handler, a little bit more size and athleticism at the point guard position will be nice. If Gates and his staff can mold that outside shot just a little bit more, man, they'll really have something in Tony Perkins. But again, a guy with tons of experience in big games, tons of reps, really good lead ball handler, just better athleticism and size at the position. It should be a nice addition for Missouri and Dennis Gates next season. And I want to talk some more basketball coming up here on the program, but we do want to move to football here for just a minute. Some pretty interesting news in the high school recruiting on the high school recruiting pages as Corey Sims, the top player in Missouri, according to Rivals. Well, Sean Williams over at Rivals put in a future cast for the Missouri Tigers. So in other words, Williams is predicting that Corey Sims, a wide receiver from CBC in St. Louis, he will be a Missouri Tiger, so that would be an enormous get for Mizzou, obviously, and Williams basically just said, hey, I'm just kind of putting it all together here. It just seems like it's going to be hard to get Corey Sims away from Mizzou and Eli Drinkwitz, but when it comes to the football portal, hey, that officially opens tomorrow, so you're going to be seeing some interesting names leaving and possibly going as well. What does Missouri want in the transfer portal? Well, I can only guess, of course, but when you look at this roster, obviously they're set at quarterback for the moment with Drew Pine backing up Brady Cook. Of course, you're always going to want offensive linemen and defensive linemen. Linemen, linemen, linemen. You always want as many linemen as you can possibly get, in my opinion. So you'll definitely look there. But otherwise, offensively, really Missouri's set at the skill positions too, at receiver, at running back. There's a reason Michael Cox is transferring. The, the tight end position is pretty well set at this point as well. So I would say maybe another cornerback. You never know what will be out there, of course, on the market. If there's a player who's just too good to pass up, heck, maybe Missouri would even take a wide receiver. I just don't see that as being likely whatsoever. I've just got to say that defense in general would be my focus. Obviously, if I were running the roster here along with offensive line depth, one thing that's a good sign, I will say, no talk of Missouri looking at a place kicker. That's a good thing. That's a good sign that Blake Craig has got that job pretty well secured and locked down at this point. I don't want to be worried about my kicker heading in to fall camp. And by the way, regarding McDonald's All-American forward Jaden Quaintance and his possible re-recruitment by the Tigers, well, nothing from Eric Bossy over at 24-7 Sports. We did have a Jaden Quaintance update that wasn't directly related to Missouri whatsoever, but Indirectly, I think this news could actually be somewhat positive for Missouri. So let's talk about Quaintance coming up here in just a little bit. But first, let's talk about LinkedIn jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. And I'll just tell you from personal experience, it's just as important to hire not the wrong person. You know what I'm saying? Because getting rid of people, that can be a real pain in the neck. But when you find the right person and LinkedIn is absolutely going to help you do that, well, it's going to be the best trade you've ever made in your life. And take that from somebody who knows a thing or two about trading. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash 
Locked On College. That's LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. It's Locked On's NFL Mock Draft live on April 17th at 6 p.m. Central streaming on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Find the ultimate six-episode series on April 17th at 7 Eastern, 6 Central to hear who the local Locked On experts are picking for every NFL franchise with live reactions from local college football experts and even the fantasy football angle. The Locked On NFL Mock Draft on April 17th at 7 Eastern, streaming live on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. And when it comes to Jaden Quaintance, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of interest right now, at least from the outside looking in from Quaintance's side at Missouri. But there is this one little nugget of information that makes me think, hey, maybe the Tigers do still have a chance with the guy who Missouri came down to the last two, Missouri and Kentucky, ultimately the McDonald's All-American forward Quaintance. Went with Kentucky, but now, of course, John Calipari has moved on to Arkansas and Quaintance has asked out of his letter of intent. Well, according to Eric Bossy over at 24-7 Sports, Quaintance's father tells him that he is taking a visit to Louisville. And the reason this is significant from my perspective is because Louisville was terrible last year, arguably even worse than Missouri, although both teams had an equal 8-24 and record on the season last year. Well, Louisville was even worse the previous year, winning four ball games under coach Kenny Payne. So Missouri looks quite a bit better than Louisville on paper the last couple years. So basically the idea that, hey, would Quaintance be – Scared off by Missouri having a terrible season last year and going 0-19. Well, that kind of tells me not really. Now, maybe he's maybe he's not going to consider Missouri the second time around. Maybe he will. Maybe he won't. My point is it doesn't seem like, well, the 0-19 part is going to be the reason why if Quaintance is scared off by the Tigers and Gates for whatever reason. Well, former Tiger Kurt Lewis has found his landing spot. East Tennessee State is where Kurt Lewis will play his final year of college basketball. Kind of gives you an indication that, well, it didn't exactly work out for Lewis and Missouri last season. When it comes to, well, guys in the future, Marcus Warwick, a 6'2 off guard from Northern Kentucky, is a guy that has visited Columbia and along with Georgia or USC, possibly Kentucky could be, he's from Lexington. That's why the possibly Kentucky, but mostly it sounds like Georgia and USC with their, their new coach, Eric Musselman, it could be the competition there for Marcus Warwick. Nothing really new on the Javon Porter situation. It sounds like it's most people expect it'll either be Missouri or Loyola Marymount with longtime friend of the Porter family, Lorenzo Romar, is the head coach there. Taurus Reed is a guy that Missouri recruited out of high school. He's visiting UConn, though, the visiting national champion, so kind of doubt Missouri gets him at this point. That would be my update there. As for Mark Mitchell, sounding like either Missouri or UCLA is the are the leaders for the former Duke forward, the six foot eight Duke forward. Again, Mark Mitchell on paper, a guy who's a starter, one of Duke's best players last season. It does make you wonder why does he want to transfer? Is, again, is this just a payday thing? Can it possibly be a payday thing? I I, I don't know. Doesn't Duke have some decent NIL in basketball? I'll be honest. I don't know how all this behind the stuff, behind the scenes stuff work. It, It works. It is just, it's a little more curious though. When you see guys at a program like Duke, who getting tons of minutes and and shots and all kinds of stuff, wanting to transfer just raises your eyes a little bit more than say somebody who's leaving from Northern Kentucky, for example, or Taurus Reed, for instance. Yes. His coach, Jawan Howard got fired. 
that makes sense. I, you could understand why he would be wanting to move around. Mark Mitchell, that is kind of curious, though. Again, not saying there's anything wrong with Mark Mitchell. It's just a question I would have for him if I'm Dennis Gates. And when it comes to current guys on the Missouri roster, I think you're going to see, obviously, more defections at this point. It's not just going to be Kurt Lewis and Jesus Carolero Martin and, and Mabor Majak. There's going to be some more guys from this roster who leave, and some of them could be surprising. I think one of the most interesting guys to keep an eye on is Trent Pierce because he's a guy that the Missouri staff really liked this previous offseason. I assume they, they still like him, though probably not as much maybe as they did. Pierce just, for whatever reason, got off to a, a, a bit of a slow start. He had his moments early in the season, but then he had an ear infection, which had him off the court and unable to travel with the team for a while. Just kind of a, a microcosm of the whole season. It just felt like everything that could go wrong for Pierce kind of went wrong that last season. But he was billed as a really good scorer and shooter coming out of high school, not just by Missouri and their staff, but by people I've talked to on this program who follow high school basketball for a living. And the thing with Trent Pierce, it's really pretty simple. Again, he was billed as a shooter and a scorer coming out of high school. Start making some shots. That's what he needs to do. If he's on this roster next year, he's got to start making some shots because his shooting obviously was not anywhere close to where it needed to be last year, and that's being kind. But with that size and his ability, he's got some pretty good ability to rebound the basketball. I think he's still an interesting prospect, but simply put, he's just got to get that confidence back in his shot next year. Maybe it is as simple as just he needed to get healthy. I really could believe that's the case. We could see a big year from Trent Pierce next season if indeed he's on the roster, and that's definitely a question mark at this point. And when it comes to the off-the-field and off-the-court stuff at Mizzou, well, it's rarely boring, is it? you got to give the board of curators and everybody in charge that at the very least. Well, Ben Fredrickson over at the St. Louis Post-Dispatch said Mizzou will be presenting renderings of Memorial Stadium renovations at the curators meeting on Thursday in Rolla. Meanwhile, board of curators is shifting gears from candidate gathering to candidate interviewing for the ongoing athletic director search. Nothing imminent, but it's accelerating. Well, my God, after two months, basically, I'm, I'm relieved to know that the people who are in charge of this university are willing to put the car into gear and back out of the driveway at this point. Again, we're not exactly accelerating just yet, but we're at least backing out of the driveway. That's how I would read that. But seriously, though, let's hope we can just find the right person. I, I got to be honest, if I weren't just a massive Missouri fan, if I were a, a, an athletic director, somebody who swam in those, in those waters, I'd be going, what in the heck is going on with this place? Why are they so weird? Why do I need all of this? I'd rather just go somewhere with similar money, similar town that doesn't have all this weirdness of the board of curators. That's what I would be thinking if I were an athletic director just looking at all this stuff from the outside looking in. But that's just me. Now, when it comes to those new north end zone plans, well, I've had my take on it. And I had one listener who disagreed with me pretty strongly on one of my north end zone takes saying that, hey, we don't need more suites actually we need more seats for the real fans for people who are actually going to get out to memorial stadium sweat sweat in the hot sun freeze in the snow on occasion that type of deal yes the real fans we need some bigger seats do we need to get memorial stadium back above 70k again let's talk about that here in just a little bit on the program But first, I do want to talk about a fan duel because it's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and fan duel is your place to bet on every single game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, bucks, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that's safe, secure, and easy to use. So what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. It's FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. 
So after basically, oh, I don't know, 50 years or so of my parents sitting in Section K at the 50-yard line at Faro Field, well, during 2020, during the pandemic, we took what we could get in terms of Mizzou football seats, so they moved us to the south end zone for that season. And you know what? We've been there ever since. We happen to like it over there for a few reasons. But So my take was on the whole north end zone. Basically, kind of do what you did with the south end zone. Do it in the north end zone. Another video board, better sound, more seating, more premium seats, especially in terms of suites. Hey, that was my idea. Well, I had a, a listener who disagreed with me on that, and I love this kind of constructive feedback. I really do. And frankly, it's easy content for me. So, and I apologize, I forgot to write down this man's name here. But if you're listening, thanks for the comment. He says, I disagree with your take on the north end zone. If Mizzou wants to become something big, they need more se seating for real fans. And not sweets for rich people who couldn't care less about Mizzou football. This is part of the problem with Mizzou football culture. Too many elderly alums that get angry at lively fans. Believe me, I've been to many games where crabby old alumni are yelling at me and giving me dirty looks for standing up on third down and making noise. Or being excited during a big play. I'm not overly obnoxious either. Well, I'll be the judge of that. Thank you very much. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But he continues here. This is the exact same culture that led to an unfulfilling South End Zone project. Don't get me wrong. It's nice, but the premium seating was poorly integrated, and they cut out nearly the entire South Bowl. And frankly, it is such a waste of space. If Mizzou wants to build a winning culture and a home field advantage, they need to increase the stadium capacity for real football fans. And he continues here, basically. So my point here is that is that building even more suites on the north end zone will gain us nothing as far as home field advantage and a place that players get excited to play. We all know it will look cool. And what and part of the reason players pick certain blue bloods is because of the stadium atmosphere. And currently, Faro does not have that. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know that I totally agree with that final part. I, certainly, you take out what? Eight to 9,000 in capacity. I believe it's about 61, 62,000. Used to be 71,000 before Missouri did that. So I agree with you on that in terms of, hey, you're going to take nine, 10,000 people out of the stadium. Obviously, that's going to affect the atmosphere a little bit. How could I possibly argue with you there? No question. On the other hand, I do think Missouri's football atmosphere is pretty darn good despite the, the reduced capacity. But I, I, I have to say it had to have been better with 71,000, right? The problem is at a certain point for nearly a decade, Missouri's football attendance had been trending downwards. You can kind of see the argument for a little bit lesser of a capacity. And when it comes to the suites, well, I don't really have a big dog in that hunt. I'm not in the market for a suite. I I'm just going to continue to sit in the south end zone bleachers. That's just going to be me. But there is demand for those suites. If there weren't actual demand for the suites, then I, I would totally agree with you. Then there's no reason to build them. Obviously, you wouldn't just build those things for, for no reason to leave them empty. But apparently there's there's waiting lists. People have been waiting years to potentially get a suite. So if you have that type of demand, why not do it? But to your point, though, could Missouri add another 5,000 seats, another 10,000 seats, get it back up to 70,000 for capacity in the north end zone? I think they could, especially with the direction this football program is going. Heck, see, ever since really 2022, 2023, now Missouri's football attendance is back on an uptrend again. So I can definitely see the argument for that. Maybe get it back to 65. Well, let's just call it somewhere in the middle there. But like you say, hey, maybe close in the bowl style there a little bit. Obviously, the, the Rock M Hill is going nowhere. But if you close in the stadium a little bit, Maybe you do have a little bit more noise. At the same time, I, I think a lot of people like the open north end zone as well. So it will be interesting to see certainly what the Board of Curators comes up with on Thursday. And certainly coming up on the program this week, not only are we going to talk about, well, those final renderings 
of the North End Zone. But, of course, plenty of guys probably coming and going in the transfer portal this week. Football, basketball, plenty of talk to, plenty, plenty to talk about, I should say. Easy for me to say. So we'll get to it every day this week right here on the Locked on Mizzou podcast.